I was on a hospital visit recently. This is something I do regularly as a pastor. And at this particular hospital, you had to pick up a phone and call to a particular wing of the hospital to get access. And so I picked up the phone and I called and I talked to the nurse's station. And they told me they'd be out in a couple minutes. So a couple minutes go by and I'm standing there and the nurse walks out. The nurse walks out, looks right at me, then looks to her left, then looks to her right, then looks back at me and says, did you happen to see a pastor out here a few moments ago? And I said, uh, that's me, I'm the pastor. And she's like, oh, my bad, I'm so sorry. And uh, she led me back to meet the person that I was there to meet. What's interesting about this encounter and others like it that I have is that most people don't assume I'm a pastor when they see my tattoos and my earrings. Uh, they've been told a story or given a narrative that pastors don't have tattoos and earrings, and maybe even religious people don't have tattoos and earrings. What's so interesting is we live in a world full of boundaries, a world that often passes judgments on people before we ever get to know their story or get to know their experience. And my experience at the hospital is relatively harmless. But as we look at our world today, we live in a world so filled with boundaries. Like you think Democrat, Republican, black, white, documented, undocumented, secular, spiritual. I could go on and on, and if I asked you to list the divisions that are popping in your head right now, you probably have quite a few. We live in a world full of boundaries. As a community leader, I like to consider different ways that communities organize. And in 1994, Paul Hebert wrote a book called Anthropological Reflections on Missional Issues. Yes, it's a mouthful. He was a missionary and he was considering how different uh, communities organize and how that, affect, how that affected his mission's work. And in one of the chapters, he talked about the concept of set theory. Set theory being a mathematical theory. And for him, he was like, okay, we have uh, the way communities organize and we have this set theory, this mathematical theory. What if we applied it to how communities organize? So I wanna take you on this journey today, this idea and explore it together of the bounded set and the centered set. These two concepts that I think could radically transform the divisions that exist in our world today. So let's take a look at the bounded set. This is bounded set. Bounded set spends its primary energy focused on defining and maintaining the boundary. And the boundary is the beliefs behaviors, expectations, distinctives of that particular community. So they spend a lot of energy on that. Uh, secondary energy is spent trying to get people to cross the line into the boundary. And then it's celebrated, yay, you crossed into the boundary, you became one of us. It creates us and them, right? Uh, if you've ever felt othered, these are the communities that kind of create that feeling. And so as we think about bounded set, uh, let's think, for example, about the Democrat and Republican Party of our country. You put a D next to your name or an R next to your name, and you're expected to vote a party line, right? Like if you come to a vote and you're like, ah, I'm really not sure that this is going to serve my constituents well, or I'm really not sure in good conscience I could vote for that or I could do that. You have pressure from your party, literally called the party line, right? A boundary um, that says, hey, if you don't vote with us, when you come up for re-election, you might get primaried, right? The party line, it's a bounded set. You're not allowed to question the boundary. In the religious world, we have similar things around theology. There's a particular pastor by the name of Rob Bell who wrote a book titled Love Wins. It was a book that was exploring questions about the topic of hell. He learned really fast that this is not uh, a healthy way to remain in bounded set. <laughs> in June 2011, he published this book to widespread criticism. One particular uh, popular pastor even tweeted, farewell Rob Bell, which may be like the most bounded set statement, right? <laughs> farewell, get out, you're out. By the end of 2011, Rob Bell was no longer a pastor at his church. The bounded set places a lot of energy on defining and maintaining the boundary and encouraging you to not question the boundary if you're inside of it. They protect that boundary quite a bit. Now, let's say I'm looking at a bounded set community 
And I want to start making steps toward that ideology, that belief system, whatever. And so let's look at the X that's furthest away. This is the farthest on. And they, and they begin to move toward the community. Like they move toward the community. Well, the question becomes, if you move toward the community, do they celebrate that? No. There's no celebration until you cross over a boundary. And so if we were to consider the communities that we have, we have multiple bounded sets. The truth is, if you really examine the communities that you're a part of, most of them are bounded set communities. They operate this way. Some might be wider bounded sets, some might be really small bounded sets, but all of the communities we organize within are bounded set communities for the most part. But there's a better way, and that's centered set. So let's explore centered set. Okay, here we go. Centered set looks like this. Centered set spends all of their energy focused on the center. And the center is the value or uh, the drive, the mission that the organization is all about. So they define the center. They really define it. Here's who we are. Here's what we're about. And then what the secondary energy is placed on is movement toward the center. How do we get as many people moving toward the center as we can? And so for here, the circles will represent that movement toward the center. And the X's will represent those that are moving away from the center. What's interesting is you maybe already know, noticed this. In this particular model, you cannot allow it to be us versus them because there's not a boundary between you. You are actually connected to the experiences of the other because you're journeying alongside of them. They may be going a different direction than you, but you're actually inviting everyone to participate to this particular journey. So let's talk about the X that's furthest away. When the X that's furthest away begins to move toward the center, the first, uh, the bounded set did not celebrate that. Let's see what happens when the X begins to move toward the center. There's celebration. There's excitement. You journey along with those particular people. You're excited, right? Because you're like, hey, you're one of us. You're moving toward the center now. Like you're, you see the vision for this particular value. Now, here's the question. Have you ever experienced bounded set? I want you to really think about this. Have you ever experienced bounded set? Like maybe you were at a particular family gathering, <laughs> like a Thanksgiving, you know, gathering, and you shared that political view, and you realized really quick, you were outside of everyone else's boundary. You're like, whoa, I love you, mom, but I didn't know we were this far apart on this. And immediately that bounded set took these people that you were having an intimate encounter with, that you love, that you care about, and you felt so disconnected and distant from them in a moment. You didn't even know if you belonged in your own house anymore, right? Or maybe you began to consider like, I, I wonder if I want to explore faith. And so you went into a church and you sat in a pew, but when you sat there, you felt like every eye looking at you in judgment. And you felt like, I do not belong here. Uh, this is a community that clearly I don't belong in. Or maybe it's even more intimate and personal and you uh, sat down with a friend or with a family member and you shared your sexual orientation and then you were abandoned. We don't have to look far in our world to see the damage that the bounded set has done. I have three children, nine, seven, and four, and they're already learning the bounded set. Because the bounded set is as simple as the lunch table at the cafeteria of our schools, where the popular kid sits and where you're reminded, I don't get to sit at that table. I don't belong at that table. So when we think about the value that this has for us, we have an innate desire to belong. Yet we have systems that tell us you don't belong. Have you ever experienced the centered set system? If you have, I would argue you did not forget it. Like it was, it, it made an impression on you if you've had a centered set experience. I was 280 pounds when I started CrossFit. My friend Ryan invited me to CrossFit Gamma just a little over two years ago. And I walked in on my first day and I was so scared and intimidated, terrified even. 
I, I did the workout next to two people that I'll just call them fire breathers. In, in, in the CrossFit community, this is a legitimate term, fire breather, like someone who has immense work capacity, right? And so these guys are flying and going crazy after the workout, and I'm just hoping that when the clock ends, an ambulance doesn't have to come like pick me up and take me to the hospital for a while uh, before I get to actually go home or just die and I'm buried. I don't know. Like, right, I, I'm sitting here like I don't belong here. I couldn't even do a pull-up. Like, legit, I could not do a pull-up two years ago. I remember Coach Emma, my first coach, came alongside me and started teaching me how to do a pull-up teaching me the basics of the motion, but also different exercises that I could do to build the strength. On January 27th of 2017, I got my first kipping pull-up. I want to show you a video of that. Yeah! <laughs> now, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Let's all close our eyes, and I want to show you the video again with your eyes closed. Go ahead and close your eyes. All right, I hope you were able to listen a little more that time. You hear Emma is actually the one filming. You hear her immediately celebrate. She celebrates so much that she shuts the video off, right? Like she shuts it off, she's like, I gotta shut the video off. Do you know why she shut the video off? Because she shut it off and she came over and gave me a huge high five. Like, you did it, we've been working at this for a while. Yes, here's the thing you need to know. Emma is a fire breather. Emma can do multiple pull-ups. She can even do a very advanced movement called a muscle-up. Why is Emma spending her time with me? In a bounded set, Emma would never cross the boundary and go outside to meet me at 280 pounds, unable to do a pull-up, and really care about, like, connecting with me. But in centered set, we invite everyone to the center. CrossFit Gamma is a centered set community. The goal is to become more fit and more healthy. And she says, I can help Justin in that. I can come alongside Justin and encourage him in that. That doesn't mean I'm anywhere near where she's at when it comes to fitness, but this model allows for an inclusion that, that we need in our world today with the boundaries that exist in our world today. So 2,000 years ago, there was this rabbi, you might have heard of him, his name was Jesus, and, um, and he came on the scene, and he was pretty radical. He came on the scene, he started hanging out with tax collectors and hanging out with prostitutes, and he really got a lot of religious people very upset about his approach. And the, probably the most bounded set of his day was called the Jewish Ruling Council. And the Jewish Ruling Council was always getting into arguments with Jesus. One particular member of the Jewish Ruling Council by the name of Nicodemus kind of was intrigued by Jesus. So he came to Jesus in the middle of the night, which is fascinating, right? Like the text literally makes it clear that Nicodemus comes in the middle of the night. He comes in the middle of the night because he's part of the bounded set. And if he questions the boundary publicly, he might have someone in the Jewish ruling council tweet, farewell Nicodemus, right? <laughs> but, but instead, he, uh, he, he comes in the middle of the night to Jesus because he's afraid, right? And he talks to Jesus, and Jesus says these two words to him that I think are so important. He says, Nicodemus, you need to be born again. Here's the deal. If you've grown up in a religious community, that might be attached to all kinds of things and experiences, and I understand that. But what if Jesus is simply saying, you're part of a bounded set system. You gotta like leave that. You gotta like die to that. There needs to be a rebirth that happens in you. The way that that whole system sees the world isn't working for anybody. And it's certainly not working for those people who are out at the margins. They belong too. What does it look like for us to expand our view of who belongs to point people toward the center? So I wanna ask you, imagine a centered set politis, politician who is more interested in meeting the needs of their constituents and even voting their conscience than the party line. Like imagine a business. I think of a business like Tom's Shoes, right? Tom's Shoes sells shoes, but they have a center that's so much more than selling shoes. They want to put a pair of shoes on the feet of someone who's in need, and so they sell shoes to make that happen. What if our businesses started operating as a centered set 
that was more worried about how they could make the world a better place, how they could improve the lives of their employees than simply a bottom line at the end of the year? What if our religious communities were less worried about dogma and all the hoops you have to jump through and instead led with belonging and acceptance? And what about you, right? You have a life. You have a, you have a family, maybe. You have goals in life. What's your center? Have you ever paused and asked yourself, what is my center? What's my goal? What am I going toward? And how am I inviting others or excluding others from participating in that? The, the reality is the world we live in is incredibly broken, right? We have so many boundaries. And these boundaries have left us feeling isolated, lonely, and longing for community. The centered set allows us to move beyond boundaries and champion something much greater. So let's move past the bounded set. Let's innovate beyond this. Here's the crazy beautiful thing, right? You don't have to have a degree. You don't have to be an expert. You don't even have to be an adult to move from bounded set to centered set. We can all do this, and it can have huge impacts on our communities. Thank you.